So in this video, I'm going to be going over uh, programming the Reefs 300 servos and uh, any of these premium servos that we're getting to put into the RCs, the Power Hobby servos, the, a, uh, the AGF RC servos, uh, and the Reefs Gold, Black, it works on both of them. I'm going to be going over how to program those and the settings that I have on both the front and the rear of the red build that I got going on right now. The Weirdo 64. So with that, let's get into it. Uh, one of the main reasons why we're getting the programmers to program the servos is because from the factory, they don't come at 100%. So when it comes to getting the most power out of the servos, the programmer is needed to turn the servos up to 100% in order to get the most power out of them. Now the Reefs and the AGFRC servos, they come set at 80%. So there's only a small little window of increase that you can get there. But when it comes to the Power Hobby servos, uh, the 209 comes factory set at 40%. So you have 60% more power to get just through the programmer itself. So when it comes to getting the most hot power out of these servos, uh, one of the first steps, key step, is to program the servos in order to get most power out of them. After that, we're going to have to get a BEC, a BEC, and we're going to go over that in, uh, in the, the next video. Also, when it comes to the travel range of the servos, uh, the servos don't come from the factory with full travel. It's not really that big of a deal in the front, uh, because you don't really need a full travel range. But if you do want to use some of these premium servos in the rear, it helps quite a bit when it comes to setting the uh, endpoints for the rear in order to get uh, all the travel that you need without maxing out the, the endpoints. So you can increase the travel range in the rear so you get the full swing that you need to, to work on the rear servos that you don't really get if with the factory settings on any of these servos pretty much. All right, so first off, uh, when it comes to uh, the Power Hobby, uh, the AGFRC, and the Reefs 300 servo, uh, all of these servos are essentially made by the same manufacturer. So they all have a very similar dongle, and they all have similar software. Oh, actually. They all have similar software, and uh, all the options in the software is basically the same. So when it comes to programming uh, our reefs over the power hobby, the programming is the exact same. The only key is that you need to have the, um, the programmer for the brand of servo that you have. The reefs will not work with power hobby, power hobby won't work with reefs, and AGFRC won't work with reefs, etc. It has to be the brand specific for in order to work with the RC. And that's about it. Uh, inside the package, what you basically get is uh, the dongle, and they all come with this same wire. Now, a lot of people are gonna see this extra lead here and not be sure exactly what it's for. You don't need to worry about that. All of these brands, they all have um, uh, servos that are direct power. So when you have a direct power servo, in order to use the, the, the programmer, you still gotta put power to the servo. Those types of servos don't get power through the, the regular lead. So you use this lead here in order to put power to those servos, which we're not really doing in this situation. So it's something we don't need to worry about, even though it might be a little confusing as to why you have a wire that you're not using. That's just for other types of servos in their fleet of servos. So for me, one of the key things that I like to have is a, uh, an extension on the USB so I can get the, the USB cable as close to the RC as possible because when you're pulling out uh, the, 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 the leads from the, the receiver, you don't want to have to pull the whole servo out the RC. You kind of want to have it you know, stay where it is and you want to do one servo at a time. So it's kind of a, a pain in the butt to have to keep the RC really close to the computer where the USB port is, these little extensions on the USB just let you put that right up to the RC and then do your work from there. So 
So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to pop out uh, one of the jumping servos. I'm going to take out my extra stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, jumping servo is going to be this one here. All right, so we got the lead for uh, one of the two front servos. And then we take the, the cable that's provided with it. Make sure that we got the, the signal wire going into the right point. Uh, these ones are both gray wire, gray wire, so make sure they're going in the right place. And then this goes into the dongle. Because we're programming one of the fronts, it's gonna be the reefs dongle. Same thing, make sure you got the signal going into the right point. Okay. And then this goes into the USB. And on the computer. Second. On the computer, when, when loading all of these programs, for some reason, uh, you need to right click on it. Uh, we're doing the reefs, so right click on the reefs and go run as administrator. For some reason, they don't recognize the servo if I don't do that. So now we have the basic the basic software in front of us. I'm just gonna get all right. So here we have the the reef software. So the first thing you notice we have these like main tabs up here. All the the different software versions for the different dongles. Uh, they all basically have the same thing. It's just a different skin. So the read is to get the servos that are off, uh, get the settings that are off the servo. But we see we already have the adapter plugged in, servo plugged in. So this is the direct settings that are on the front servo here. So you notice I have the uh, servo angle. This is the travel range. So how far the servo will travel. Because it's in the front, we don't need a lot of travel it's a very short throw for the hop so i have that actually reduced to 120. Uh, and then when it comes to the the neutral point is the your your center point uh, this is something again we don't really need when it comes to using these servos in the low riders um, if you're working with a crawler or a, a race a race truck or something you want to just dial in that center point you have the ability to adjust the, the neutral zero point with that there, but we don't really need that. Next, we have a PWM, power. This is basically how powerful and how strong the servo is and how much uh, amp pull it's going gonna, it's gonna to pull to produce power. So if, if you want to hop, you want that all that power, you have to have this turned all the way up. Uh, next, we have dampening factor. Uh, this is basically the opposite of the power. We want to turn this all the way down. The reason is because it's going to dampen the power as we're trying to hop. Now, when it comes to hopping in a performance situation, we want to have all that power. We don't want to have anything to, to limit the power. Uh, sensitivity, ultra high. We, we want to have it instant. We want to get all the speed out the server that we can. Because it comes when it comes to the hopping, it's a combination between speed and power. So we want to not limit the power or limit the speed in any way. So we keep uh, power turned up, dampening down, and sensitivity on ultra. Uh, the rest is not really important for the performance of the the hopping action and the the, the servos inside the lowrider. Uh, I do use the soft start. Uh, soft start is basically going to be or when you turn on the RC. If you have this stick at a different point from when the actual servo position is, it's going to take a two seconds to slowly try and get there. And then after those two seconds, it's going to give full power to the servo and just hop there. So say, for instance, uh, you have the back sticks all the way up, but when you plug it in, they're all the way down. It's going to slowly lift up. And then one, after about two seconds, it's just going to shoot the rest of the way up. The only reason it's going slowly is because it's got the weight of the back end to, to deal with that. In the front, it's, it's a lot quicker. So yeah, when, it, when you're done making your adjustments, it's very simple. You just hit the right button. It's going to write those settings to the servo. You unplug it and move on to the next one. So I'm just going to pop out the front one and we're going to put in the uh, uh, one of the rear servos. So now in the back of my kit, I actually have AGFRC servos. 
So the Reef software doesn't recognize that the dongle's in there and doesn't recognize that there's a servo plugged in. So we gotta close this software, which is exit. And we gotta load up the AGFRC program. And again, run this as administrator. And boom, we're in business. So now it's basically the a different skin, but essentially the same software, all the same options and everything. So let's see. Oh yeah. Now you also got to switch the dongle. So I got to make sure I pull out the reefs dongle and put in the AGFRC dongle. Plug that sucker in. Oh yeah. Adapter plugged in. Do it. Double tape with the servo. Servo plugged in, boom. So now we've got the servo plugged in and in the rear, because we have more travel, what I have mine set to is 175. Uh, again, power at 100, sorry, uh, power at 100. But here I have dampening set to not the minimum, 100, it goes all the way up to 600. <laughs> Well, I have it basically set at 100 because this is the rear end. It's not the front. So I'm not trying to hop with the rear end. There's a lot of weight there. So it's, I don't really need to have all that all that juice put there. I, I might even eventually turn the PWM power down a little bit to maybe like 70. I don't know. Just playing with it because you don't really need all that power in, in the back end unless you're you know trying to get the rear wheels off the ground, do any of that hopping with the back end or full jump or something like that dancing whatever your pleasure is but for me i don't really plan on doing too much uh air jumping in the back end this is mostly for getting the front end to pop and you know be a fully functioning low rider so with that i basically have the uh, the dampening at uh, 100 and the pwm set to 100 full power ultra sensitive now this one here, you might notice that I have the inversion setting also clicked on. Uh, what the inversion setting is, is that just switches the direction. So in order to uh, have the directions of the servos that I'm running match the original servos, AGFRC, I have to flip the directions. You don't need to do it in the reefs, but I mean, that's basically something you can switch both in the controller and inside the uh, the software i mean i guess in case you have like a controller where you don't have that option or you're running two servos off the same signal you want to have them both going in different directions you have the ability to do something with that here but for the lowrider rc it doesn't really matter uh, the narrow band and sanwa uh, these are things for uh racing when you have like a, a sanwa controller set up that has extremely high frequency again this is something that we don't really need to even consider with the um uh with the red cat controller you just may need to make sure that you don't have those turned on because if they tur they're turned on they're not going to they're not going to work properly with the red cat controller so the servos do need to have those turned off i mean other than that uh, we do run overload protection overload protection is if you do get it to stall for too long and it finds itself it's forcing after you know set numbers of uh, uh, set amounts of time it's going to reduce the power gradually so that you're not uh, burning out the servo Again, that's something more along the lines if you got a crawler and you got like a wheel jammed and stuck and it's holding like the load of the rc it's not going to continue giving power to that servo to to burn it out however that's not a foolproof servo ser that's not a foolproof system because more than a few servos have still burned out that way but it does give you a bit of overload protection so this is something that's done before setting the endpoints uh, the endpoints are going to work off the travel range. So you have to make sure that, you know, uh, anytime you adjust the travel range, it's going to affect your endpoints. So you have to readjust the endpoints if you're making adjustments on the travel range. Uh, for, as far as the power goes, you can adjust the power and the dampening. It's, it's not going to make a difference. I mean, if in the future you want to tone down the power of the rear servos or you want to bring up the power slowly, uh, that's not going to make any effect on the endpoints or the um, the travel range. That's only going to do with the power, nothing else. So with that, I mean, I hope uh, anybody who's planning on getting some upgraded servos or has some upgraded servos and wants to learn about programming them, that's basically all there is to it. 
Uh, if you do have any questions or comments, like them down, post them down below. I do try to answer all the questions. So if there's anything that's not clear or anything you need to have a little quick question about, I will try to get to that. With that, thanks for all the likes, subscribe, shares, and I'll see you in the next one.